Okay. Okay. After the, uh, no, I got it. After the game. Game. Yeah. Football. The, the commercials are my favorite part. Hockey. Okay, I got it right here. Hey, contestants, how you doing? Glad you could be here. How many people do we have playing today? I can't really say that. All right, uh, player one, how about typing your name in for me now? That's good. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, Peter, do I have a problem? I can't you're hear you. Six, seven, eight. You're doing All right, good. player two, we need your name next. 45 seconds. All right, player three, you know the drill. Hey, hey you! So it's sideways, so it's up and down, so it's sideways, so it's up and down. Yeah, no, 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 on the other side. Everybody just, just calm. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you looking for a seven-question tournament? Cool. Roger that. 30 seconds. You're that's talking good. about no, walking. Player one, your buzzer is Q. That's Q like quicksand. Player two, your buzzer is the letter B, as in you're my best friend. And player three, you've got the letter P, as in pass the sauce. Hot in here. Hello, someone's been using my boot. Get the old man out of the booth. Get him out. 20 seconds. Scully up, scully up, dude. 20 seconds, what the? Fine, uh, now listen. Oh, what, do you have an appointment later or something? Well, I wouldn't want to keep you. Somebody here's in a big rush, so let's start the game. Player one, it's up to you. What are we doing? This one's going to be heads or tails, you win. And there's $1,000 riding on this one. Okay, suppose you decide to make yourself a nice, fresh cheerleader salad. Because it's the name of an officially recognized cheerleading toss, which technique should you use? Player three. The cradle toss is a move recognized as a legal toss. And for your salad dressing, I suggest using a little olive oil on your cheerleaders. That'll spruce up any salad. Player three, select a category. Number two! Number two! The category, not so proud Olympic moments. Okay, 2,000 bucks is coming your way if you get this one. Everything in place? Because here she comes. What was the cause of Russian athlete Boris Onoshenko's disqualification from the 1976 Olympic modern pentathlon competition? Too many toes, a laser-guided rifle sight, an electronic cheating device in his APA, or a hormone-enhanced horse? Go for it. Player one, you just... Hey, who are you? Rongy Rongerson? Player two, player three. Go for it, player... No, they can take care of extra toes pretty easily during the fencing part of the pentathlon. Player two, you want to take a crack at it? Player Boris was caught trying to use an electronic cheating device in his fencing a pay that signaled a hit on his opponent every time he pushed a concealed button. <laughs> An Olympic investigators later discovered that the entire plot was masterminded by Boris's diabolical wife, Natasha. Hey! What do you say, player two? How about it? The category is House of Wax. The amount on the table is three grand. Remember this children's rhyme? Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. If Lizzie Borden wanted to take on her dad in a different sort of 41, where could they be playing? On a pool table, at a bridge table, on a beach volleyball court, or in a hockey <laughs> play? You should really see a specialist for that. <laughs> player two, player three, you wanna take <laughs> beach volleyball? No. But with Lizzie playing, I bet we see a whole new kind of spiking. <laughs> <laughs> player three, you gonna step up and take it? <laughs> now or never, player three. 41 is a game of pool. <laughs> and that's 41, Lizzie. You bastard! <laughs> Player three, you're up. What's the category? Four! And the category is baseball shorthand and teen angst. Okay, swing this one and I'll give you 2,000 bucks. All right, let's get this ball rolling. If Holden Caulfield from the novel The Catcher in the Rye were a baseball catcher, which number would a scorekeeper use to identify him? Two, six, nine, or 11? Player two, what? Number two. <laughs> 
Only instead of a catcher's mask and a chest protector, Holden prefers simply to wear a straight jacket. Okay, we need a category. You're f Net, you owe me five. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Quien es el nimrado? A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. All right, get yourself set. It's time. Based on what it means in hunting, what would a true Nimrod probably do if he entered a big game hunting contest? Use his rifle as a fishing pole, bag the biggest trophy, refuse to hunt, or shoot someone by mistake. Player The screw's in your court, player two. Oops, sorry! Player one, player three, who's taking it? Go for it, player three. You know, loser is such a strong word. Player so wait a minute. They'd enter a hunting contest, then refuse to hunt? Who's the Nimrod here? Phew, something stinks in here. Take a look at the right answer. In the world of hunting, a Nimrod is a term meaning mighty hunter. So he'd probably bag the biggest trophy. Of course, then he'd probably lock his keys in his car. Player one, pick one. Uh-oh, best putts fits mine, whore. It's time for a flicker pistol stop. Your category for this gibberish question is, she's a black magic woman. The opening value on this gibberish question is 5,000 bucks. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. Hey, 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 listen up and tell me what does this rhyme with. Don't let the punctuation trip you up. Girl, she gruff. A fair wicked toots, y'all. Wicked? Did Samantha from Bewitched play a sport? All right, here's a hint. It's a pro sports league. A league that was not successful in the U.S. It's a global football league. Hey, it's time to get into your hurry-up offense. Let's go! Hey, Bob, what are you watching? Girl, she gruff a fair wick and toots, y'all. Oh. Hey, say what you will, but they're still the only ones with the helmet cam. Player one, give me a category. Tag Team Naked Skydiving, tonight at 7. The name of this category is... That's the spirit. This question's worth $2,001 bills. Wipe off your finger and get it ready. Let's get busy. Japanese Olympic gymnast Shun Fujimoto received near-perfect scores for the side horse and ring exercises during the 1976 Olympics. Under what unusual circumstances did he perform? He was an imposter, his kneecap was broken, he was drunk, or... Player three. Everything's just a big sex scandal to you, isn't it? <laughs> player one, player two, who wants this puppy? <laughs> player <three>. See ya! <laughs> You're up! Yeah, he was drunk, and his routine was actually a sobriety test. <laughs> a -der. How about this one? <laughs> Shun's kneecap was broken. He broke it during the floor exercise, but didn't want anyone to worry about him, so he just kept going. And there's no truth to that rumor that Jeff Galuli was spotted nearby. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeff Stone. Player one, it's your choice. What looks... eight! And the category is... Jack in the USSR. Okay, this isn't going to be easy, but you're looking at $3,000. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Imagine you were a Russian citizen in 1976. If you were participating in the Ready for Work and the Defense of the USSR sports program, in which... Now or never, player three. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, and I'd hammer some sense into your head. <laughs> player one, player two, who wants it? Go for it. Grenade tossing was actually a sport, along with marching, skiing, and running. <laughs> Though for some reason, grenade catching never caught on. I got it! 